In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint translucent paintings on plexiglass. In the paintings here, you can see the surface from the front, but you can also see all the way through to the back. So whatever you want to put on the back of yours will show um, a distance of the thickness of the plexiglass, in this case, um, about a quarter of an inch. These paintings, whether abstract or figurative, are then covered with liquid polyester resin, which stiffens the plexiglass so that it can hang on the wall. You can see all my work as well as my writing on DarylHalbrooks.com, as well as my other video um, lithography printed from the iPad. So please visit that site too on YouTube. This is a jar of half matte and half gloss medium um, Mod Podge. You may have used that. I mix it with water and I paint it. You can see some of, the, some of it on the surface here where I've, I've just spread it on the surface and wiped it around with my hand. It dries transparent and then I uh, paint over that and you can see that I've also I've already cut some of these things into strips. Sometimes I splatter on it, whatever. So when I peel this away from the surface, like, well, right here, I'll try to peel up a little bit of a little piece. I do it with a knife, but like, there you go. So I hang these things up to dry. This is completely dry. And when I get ready to apply it, to my plexiglass, I just spread some of this matte medium back onto the surface with a brush and lay it on wherever I want. That's how I'm ending up with uh, surfaces like these things on, on this painting here. Before we look at the actual process, I'm going to try to show you some of the depth that you can see in here. On this painting, um, the, the surface that you're looking at, you can see in past that area here where we're looking at the back side. This is the front. The stuff that you see through here is the back. I even used the brushes on this one that, that I um, put the polyester resin on and just glued them right to the painting. So they're on there too. And uh, some of these lines were painted by hand with a paintbrush, but also you can see um, areas of spray paint where I masked part of it off and sprayed around it. So on this one, for example, um, I have this figure and he's made of all those little parts that have been glued on. Now, when I put them on the surface, they're going to be rough. What I want is a slick, glass-like finish. So, once I get the image the way I want, including the spray painting around the edge, and again, you're seeing the um, rippled surface showing through the back, then I apply the poly polyester resin and start sanding like hell. And what I always tell everybody is I spend 10% of the time painting and 90% of the time sanding. Sanding polyester resin uh, is also very dangerous. You want to wear a mask at all times. I don't have to have edges like this, but when I put the resin on, some of it bleeds over the edge, and I actually like that surface, so I leave those uh, rough edges around it. Otherwise, I would have a, a very rigid um, plexiglass surface, which I don't find quite as interesting. In this piece, important looking lady with unexploded ordnance, um, I have a figurative painting which has been overlaid with the polyester resin but there's also 
everything showing through from the back, which in this case was um, not only the texture that I'm making here, but also um, printed cloth, these polka dots, they're glued onto the back side. So this is the back side that you can see the polka dot cloth. Uh, that was dipped in the resin and then laid out over it. Um, here is some of this texture on the back side that you can see is really standing up and everything. And that's what you're seeing through the front. And all of them have to have hangers. So I make a little plexiglass cube, uh, drill a hole through it and put this wire through here so it can hang, you can see, and it's very strong because it's, it's uh, polyester resined to the back of the painting. Um, the painting is, is very stiff in this case. So there's the back side. The final step in paintings like this is to get uh, this glass-like surface, which you don't have to do. You could um, leave it rough if you want to, but I want this glass-like final surface. And so what I do is, when everything is finished, I use this spray gun, an automotive spray gun, and I mix um, automotive clear coat, which is this. This one costs, I think it's marked on here somewhere, $85 for this gallon, which has lasted me more than a year and probably 15 paintings like this. The clear coat is mixed um, three parts clear coat to one part activator. And I mix it in this jar here and I've put some marks on there. So for a small painting like, well really this one you know, it's about 24 or 36 inches high by 24 wide. This one is a little bit bigger. I would need a little more clear coat on that. But uh, so I've got two different sets of marking. But ordinarily, I'll I'll fill up to three lines here with the with the clear coat and another line up with the activator, and then I also add a little a little enamel reducer to it just a bit to make it flow better and each time i take my gun apart clean it out because this stuff will stick in there forever um, i also before i spray it i use these filters this is a paper filter and you can see it's been used once but it'll still allow some some of the stuff to go through so I want to make sure that the uh, the clear coat is perfectly filtered before I put it in my gun and spray it. There's the door outside of my studio, so I take it out there to spray it. This stuff is even more poisonous than the resin. And by the way, when I put the resin on, I put it on and then I go for a bicycle ride or go play basketball or something like that to stay away from my studio for at least a couple hours until um, I'm sure that resin smell is away. It, all of this stuff will kill you eventually, but since I'm already 70 years old, I'm not too worried about it. You know, you gotta, you gotta go sometime. Uh, I'm just joking. Take every precaution you can. Do most of the things outside if you can. Um, you, you can spray it outside. I, I put it on this yellow chair out there and spray it, then close the door, try to make sure none of the spray comes back into the studio. So um, I'm going to upload this video so you've seen basically the finished product. My next video I'm going to take you from kind of start to finish on how I do one of these. Thank you. Again, visit me at DarylHalbrooks.com.